Um, you know, so many of these principles that we're discussing today, uh, whether it is directly uh, confronting the realities of climate change, land use, um, creating high paying jobs in order to protect our public lands, um, advocacy for indigenous sovereignty, all of these things are, are core Green New Deal tenets. Uh, but I want us to zoom out a little bit because when we were first drafting uh, the Green New Deal, and many other uh, pieces of environmental legislation, very often there were so many folks, uh, well-meaning, well-intentioned, deeply studied, that said it makes no sense to consider issues of uh, justice and injustice with decarbonizing our economy. And they said we, sh we need to stick to the science of the problem and worry about all of the injustice stuff later or separately. And I think it's important for us to take the opportunity, uh, Ms. Metters Knight, to actually discuss how injustice and colonization is, a, is part of what has led us to this climate crisis today. In 2021, the United States experienced record-breaking wildfires like the Dixie Wildfire in California that burned nearly one million acres of land, an area larger than New York City, Chicago, Dallas, and Los Angeles combined. Millions of acres of land across the United States were once indigenous, and we now call them national parks. And we know that there's so much of the indigenous stewarding and practices that were going on for millennia including the controlled deliberate burns that cleared out dead underbrush without catching fire to taller trees. Now, Ms. Metters Knight, what are some of the benefits of uh, native controlled burns to the ecosystem and overall land? You're gonna have carbon sequestration, carbon stored into the soil. You're gonna have healthy fire adapted plants and you're gonna have a thriving ecosystem that has lots of biodiversity which is natural selection, natural uh, mortality that is chosen by the fire. And Ms. Meadows uh, Knight, despite the benefits that you just outlined, when the United States forcibly displaced Native American tribes, federal fire policy then banned Native controlled millennia long burning practices that to care for the land and instead promoted explicit fire suppression designed to correct, uh, protect watersheds and commercial timber supplies. Is that correct? Yes, they also prohibited our cultural practices up until the 1970s and uh, cultural burning is one of those prohibited practices that was part of our ceremony and part of our lifestyles. So up until the 1970s, the colonization and the displacement of indigenous peoples uh, in the United States included banning a practice that we now know explicitly sequestered carbon. And would you say that it's fair to say, Ms. Metters Knight, that the colonization of, uh, of indigenous peoples in the United States and the consequences of that have contributed to uh, carbon emissions? It's contributed immensely. So is it accurate to say as well that when the practice, when uh, controlled burning was banned over decades, the land grew thick then with vegetation and it dried out every summer, essentially creating huge king, kindling stocks for extreme and even more devastating forest fires than otherwise? As well as that, they also included planting uh, acres and acres of non-native conifers that don't belong in that ecosystem to put on top of that fire hazard as well. So uh, as was covered earlier in this hearing, the federal government has authorized the Forest Service and the Bureau of Land Management to conduct stewardship contracts to do a number of things, but they've actually contracted many corporations uh, to sell timber instead of more straightforwardly stewarding the land, correct? It's called goods for services, yes. And uh, what are some of the proposals and what are some of the ideas that you would uh, recommend the committee entertain in order to right that wrong? 
goes directly to the goods for services and expand it to be more complementary and applicable to a uh, economy that's place based in that area. Say for instance, California has acorns. We also have a, uh, a, a really a limited amount of native seeds to, uh, to reseed or revegetate um, these burn scars. And so it's really important to create these seed banks because that becomes the capital that is in all of your federal forests that is shared between tribes. It is focusing on the capital of goods for services and those goods can be seeds, those products can be food and those products can be sequestered carbon as well as um, food that's also brought off the, the, uh, the floor that is processed um, in each, I would say in each area. So a lot of stuff that comes off of a forest floor on the Pacific coast will be different than the East coast, but of course, those uh, products um, are goods for services that the tribe knows how to procure. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now I'd like to recognize Representative Krishnamurthy. Hey, thank you, Chair Khanna. Uh, 